right, let's see how many rooster crows this takes us. <laughs> guys welcome back to calico cow acres today we are switching gears back to working on our chicken coop area it's been a minute since we've kind of done anything in here yeah we've been pretty hands-off with it since the birds were living in there we finally got to the point where we were gonna like integrate the ducks back into living with the chickens it went well for like a day or two but unfortunately we noticed the chickens were start or well we think the roosters were starting to beat up one or two of the ducks and we had already removed the temporary wall that we had separating them which was always the plan we always wanted one big run we're going to build a new separate area in the run that's a little more intentionally laid out so the ducks have a good space in their own house um, and then the chickens still have plenty of room to roam around the reason we built that little mobile coop a couple weeks ago the frat house is what we've been calling it is because from the get-go we ordered one rooster and we got three so our ratio that we had kind of planned on was off we've kind of been needing to remedy that because of that we had some injury issues with the chickens too because they were getting over mated the hens were and so <laughs> you have seen in the last handful of videos marmalade the chicken our basement chicken she was in the basement during the nighttime for like a month and then during the day we'd put her in our little quarantine coop area separate from everyone but she is finally healed now and we've incorporated her back into the coop as well and we decided to get saddles for them the the ones that have been getting picked on mostly and those are working really really well we haven't had any issues since we put those on almost a week ago now and yeah. I think that was a good solution but marmalade's all good everyone's healed so if we keep having issues with that we'll just put saddles on everybody and keep an eye on them but we are being very cautious and trying to watch make sure that's not happening so like taylor said it's always been the plan to have one integrated whole flock a mixed flock with the ducks and the chickens and that's why we got them at the same time back last summer we got them all as chicks and ducklings to kind of get raised together but because of that temporary wall and just some of the injuries we had with like Bill and his hot dog and everything, they were separated for a little while and now because of that, they the roosters just don't really get along with the ducks. <laughs> and we found that out when we took that temporary wall out. So I'm gonna show you the footage from doing that and then we're gonna talk about what the plan is moving forward. I mean, it does, and it, it looks huge, and it is huge.
So a couple days after we took the temporary wall out of the run, we noticed that one of the ducks, Steve, had like some peck wounds on the back of her neck and Bill had one or two peck wounds on his bill. Um, so he was probably going after a rooster trying to protect his, his duck. They probably, they weigh at least 50% more than Bill and they're probably as tall if not taller than him. And so part of the reason that we made this run and coop so big, we've told you guys, is we knew that was a possibility that we would have to split up the flocks and we wanted just the potential to change in the future and have the space to do it if we wanted to. Where the temporary wall was before is not where we planned to ever split the coop. So we're actually going to be splitting up or split the run. We're actually going to be splitting up the run in a different spot where we initially planned to split it in the future if we needed to. And that's going to be the duck zone. Another reason that we wanted to do that and we didn't realize it until we had them kind of integrated together is we let the ducks out to free range almost daily. They kind of just wander our property most of the day and they do really well. Like they know how to protect themselves. They run under trees if there's a hawk nearby. They stay in our yard, they stay on our property. Yeah, and they don't really, they don't tear up the garden like yeah. the chickens do. So we don't have to really worry about them ruining our garden beds too much. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see about that once we have seedlings in it. I'm not 100% sold on that. <laughs> they, they ate all our seeding, seedlings this fall. But we noticed that we were trying to let the ducks out and all the chickens would leave too. So it was harder to let the just the ducks out. So it'll be nice to have them separate and just be able to open the door and let them go out or in without having to lure the chickens back in with treats. Well, we never really tried, but we don't think they were ever really going to use the ramp to get <laughs> into the elevated chicken coop. That's something that like maybe when they were little, if we could have taught them to do that, they might have. So right now they're still living in their IBC tote house. Yeah. But splitting this in a more um, intentional way gives us the opportunity to build them like a permanent little hut that'll be underneath the chicken coop. Yeah. So they don't, you know, they'll have a little, a light ramp, but they'll pretty much be at the ground level like they're, they're used to being and they'll have their own space. Yeah. Duck Hut 2.0. It'll be a little <laughs> bit more fancy for them. The way that we are setting up this split and their new little hut, it's going to let us leave the future pond and their current swimming pool in the location that we had always wanted it to be in. Um, we wanted it in that specific corner because it gets nice sunshine and it will be easy to drain it down in that spot, just accessing it and everything more than anywhere else in the coop. So we wanted to leave <laughs> we wanted to leave that where it is if possible. So that's why that's kind of why we left it or that's why we split the coop where we're going to. Right now we're feeding them with 1020 plant trays pretty much <laughs> just because that's what we have and we can throw a couple of them in there and split them up. They all can eat at the same time. They don't fight over it that way. But we want to do gutter feeders eventually and the watering system. We are going to be going to get IBC totes to set up a watering system with the little cups and everything that they can or nipples or cups or whatever that they can drink out of. And the way that our little duck hut's going to be and their split of the coop, the way that we are splitting it, we'll still be able to give both the chickens and the ducks water from that same system yep so i think it's gonna work well small changes that yeah. aren't too much of a shake up and we had all the materials to do this i think we had to go get two boards yeah. so yeah most of it is just being built with the temporary wall that we took down earlier in the week yeah so that's what we're working on today or that's what you're working on today um i'm gonna help wherever i can but for now it's gonna be him i'm gonna go do some garden projects, probably more mulching. So I'm sure you guys are excited to watch him do something instead of me mulching for once. Uh, yeah, so actually, clean. So let's go to the bottom.
Look at these guys. Do you like that? Hello. Look at those toes. make it so the wall is or the wall of their house is on the, like the inner face of this right yeah because we want to still be able to pull the wagon yeah. and dip it under the edge a little so we can scrape the straw out all right so I'm in here working with all the chickens right now building the duck house so we're gonna build a suspended duck house right here just so it stays out of the mud and it's gonna be underneath the coop, so it's really not that big a deal for me to just kind of like hang a box off the underside of the coop floor. I've added in these kind of like horizontal supports because the depth of this duck house doesn't go all the way to the next floor joist and it's longer than this floor joist. So those are gonna give me somewhere to hang the framing off of and it's just going to be kind of like a two by four skeleton frame and then we will sheet it with leftover plywood from the big coop. It'll have a hardware cloth floor like we did in our A-frame that'll keep airflow nice through there and then when it's the weather's a little cooler out we'll just make sure to fill it up really good with hay so they have a nice bedding in there. But since they're ducks and they're wet and they're messy it should help keep their bedding a little more dry and last a little longer. I had to move a board up here um, so all this stuff kind of lines up when I add another support but I am ready to add another support. All right I forgot what I was doing. I am well I had initially cut this board but I cut it long enough to overlap these and then I thought about screwing like the siding sheet to it and I'd like it to be like a continuous surface. So I cut it down and now I'm drilling pocket holes so it can screw into the side of this and the side of this. Then these will be like one plane where I can screw their side sheet on here. Um, so I'm gonna get this in and then I'll start measuring up for that side. She's using it as a dust bath. chicken wire or hardware cloth wall here just like the lower part or just like over there um, so I need a board to go across here Thank <laughs> you. 
How did he do, Marmalade? Your construction friend. We'll pull the dirt out before you start pecking away. It's like, what the heck? Like How long do you think before they jump on it? They're really interested in finding their treats still, so. I know, they haven't gotten actual treats in a while. But we've got our little, got our little site supervisor here. She's very interested. As I was digging the trench, she found like two or three worms. Oh. And like, she saw them almost as soon as I dug him up and she snagged him right out of the dirt. She just found another one a couple minutes ago. She's helping. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, kick it that way. Good job, Marmalade. I think you really are her best friend. She really loves hanging out with you. I love my Marmalade. Look at her, she's helping. Thank you. She's so cute. Hey, sweetheart. We did chicken wire on this lower portion, but this upper portion is bigger height-wise than the lower one, obviously. I don't know if you can see that. That's like three feet. This is like almost five feet, maybe a little bit more than four. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it, the gap itself is probably four and a half feet. We tried to get five foot chicken wire. You have to order it. We don't have anywhere we can get it locally, so we have it on order or are going to have it on order. And we are just going to use this multi-purpose, what is it, multi-purpose netting in the meantime. Do that. Yeah, we had some of this around anyway for other stuff, and it'll be a fine temporary solution. It's black, so I do kind of expect the birds to fly into it at some point, because they yeah. probably won't see it very well. But it's lightweight. They shouldn't get stuck in it. Just to clarify this again, we are not separating the birds from like predators with this. It's just separating the chickens from the ducks. So it doesn't need to be super intense. This is gonna be temporary. We're all gonna put chicken wire up when it comes, but this should be plenty sturdy at least to keep the chickens out, but they might try to fly up there. We'll see.
the ramp come up to here. Yeah. Did you find a house? Is that your house? a project <laughs> as they do we are back and it's a different day same spot so another thing we're hoping to get for the duck house is another chick cozy door the automatic door that we have on our big coop we told you guys back in december december or january that chick cozy sent us a door to review and we were planning on buying one anyway the timing just happened to work out nicely so i have footage from when we first installed it back in december and we're going to show you that here so opening this up, they have instructions and there's a bunch of different ways you can install this. They tell you exactly the size of the hole you need. You have a full instruction manual if you need more detail on that. And I think the best part about this is that you can actually plug it in to use it so you don't have to worry about the battery dying. But you can also use batteries and it actually comes with the batteries which is really nice. I will say this is actually probably my favorite part. There's a lot of cute chicken stickers that come with it. <laughs> Look, they even have a raisin. So that's really cute. And then it's just tucked nicely in here. We got the color goldenrod. So it's like this burnt orange color and I think it's really pretty. The rest of our coop is green. So I thought this would be some nice contrast if you care about that sort of thing. <laughs> the colors are really pretty. They have a green door option too and I think some other they might have other options as well. So yeah, it's pretty simple. That's what's in the package. Then you have your power adapter if you're gonna use that, batteries, and the screws. Taylor's waiting for me over there. Let's go bring this over to him and let him install it. It's kind of a tight squeeze in here right now because we still have the temporary run up over here. But eventually this is gonna change a little bit once we get it all situated. So the door's gonna go right here. They're gonna have their ramp down and it's actually, this is so high off the ground, we're actually going to do a ramp with like a landing. <laughs> homestead things and all these projects we're filming editing for YouTube life is life is pretty hectic for us so not having to think about letting the chickens out every single morning like getting up at a certain time and letting them out has been so nice having them in the temporary solutions we had before they worked okay but this has improved our quality of life significantly and I'm sure it's improved theirs too, honestly. Like they like getting out first thing in the morning. And we do get up decently early, but neither of us are morning people. So we don't, yeah. we don't if we don't have to. Right. After we installed it, it took our birds probably three or four nights to get fully used to it. Most of them learned it like the first night that they needed to be in the coop, you know, it when it got dark and um, the door was set to close after that. 
We come let the ducks into their hut every night, so we came to check on the chickens anyway and make sure they were inside so they didn't get trapped out all night, but it only took a couple nights. So it's been working really well for these couple months. Even though it got really cold, I was pretty surprised. Uh, the battery's saying it's still at like 80 or 90 percent, which is great. It only uses a few double A's. So going through a couple months on barely any battery life, it's, you know, not something we really have to worry about. I do want to try and update you guys on when our battery does finally die. So I'm going to try and remember that. I'm just really curious and I want to let you know how long the battery lasts for us anyway. Yeah, I mean at this rate I wouldn't be surprised at all if it goes at least six months. Yeah. It was really easy to install. We just had to cut a hole and pop it in and it came with the dimensions for cutting that hole. Mm -hmm. It has anti-squish <laughs> technology. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but that's my term for it. <laughs> It hasn't squished a single chicken yet. It's got like motion sensors on it. So even if there's a piece of hay stuck in it or straw stuck in it or poop, it doesn't close, which I would much rather have to like make sure it's cleaned out and have it squish my chicken. One of my other favorite features about this that's different on other doors other automatic doors that we looked at, they either open upwards and I've noticed reading reviews and hearing from other people, those ones tend to fail more easily. But then some of the other ones have doors that are like one whole door and they open to the side. Particularly on smaller type of coops, it's more of a hassle, I think. Our coop, it probably wouldn't be an issue. But you have to mount your door in a specific location to allow room for one huge door to open to the side. This one opens at the center, which I really like. Yeah, it doesn't take very much clearance on either side. And we were able to design our rooster tractor A-frame coop. Um, which has a pretty small area for the door, but we designed it so the another chick cozy would mount right up to that. We were also able to design our duck hut the same way, so we do hope to get chick cozies for those because this one's been working great. At this point, we kind of have the, the wall set up, finalized in the run. The ducks have a permanent home. The chickens are settled in their big area so there's a few things we need to do to finish it up we are still going to put a dig barrier in of hardware cloth we're going to add some permanent roosts into the run the chickens like to we have a couple in there already but they definitely like to have somewhere elevated to sit and then there's some little trim work we need to finish up now that we have the temporary wall out where the ducks used to be too we have all this really nice compost to use for the garden for our roost out style no dig beds and now that that wall's out we have the space to actually finish the the ramp because it's only partially finished right now the lower section of the ramp is just temporary because where we want it to go in the permanent spot would have run right into that wall we had in there so we have one last thing that we're excited to tell you we have a little surprise and it was kind of a surprise to us too <laughs> we weren't really planning to do this but this is how Homestead life goes apparently. Um, we got more chicks. Come here. Oh my goodness, look at you, you're so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye. Picked a good spot. It's back. It went well for like a day. So, and that's. But the roosters are. is hitting me in the face okay so there's <laughs> right now we're feeding them this bad boy can fit so many chickens
I'll probably turn the camera off. You want me to just do a time lapse of you thinking for like a half hour? People showed up to buy eggs and the wind blew the door open and all the chickens ran out. So I was chasing chickens for like 20 minutes, but set my stool back up here. Because I didn't really plan for keeping. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Marmalade. I didn't. Yeah, it's a good thing I can squat for long periods of time. Slap that in there. I'm trying to show what you're doing, but there's a lot of chickens in the way. Oh gosh, please don't. <laughs> Ma'am. No chickens on the camera, please. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, she loves you so much, babe. <laughs> Guys, we're trying to show people what dad's doing. You're just in the way. They're like, dirt! <laughs> oh, what? marmalade. <laughs> Where are you oh, going? We got Pope marmalade again. Let me fix this. Let me fix your saddle, sweetie. There you go. <laughs> you okay there? <sighs> Just happened to work out. I do. Wanna... So a couple of our favorite things. And then we were also able to do the same. But then it'll come out. So if anything, predators we have around here, which is just kind of make the coop itself. Look like, keep it a little cleaner from them bringing all the because we'll have a, a chicken cart with it. <laughs> Just get myself a wedgie. 